Hey guys, Drifter here. Today I want to talk to you about the Harley Quinn show because it's actually good, like shockingly good. I couldn't believe it myself. I sat down to watch an episode thinking this was going to be miserable and found myself pleasantly surprised so much so that I wanted to make a video and share this little show with all of you. And this is coming from a guy who doesn't even like Harley Quinn as a character. Matter of fact, I would say I hate Harley Quinn in pretty much everything that she's been in. More on that later, but it completely redoes the character so she's far less annoying. I've been taking a deep dive into media lately, mostly because my health is crap and I'm laid up for long hours of the day, not really able to move, but also not able to sleep, so I'm just watching a lot of TV. And the number one rule that I have about all the things that I watch is that it can't be boring. It can be funny, it can be scary, dramatic, educational, artsy, smartsy, even weird furry stuff. Honest to God, I've been watching Beastars and uh, Has Been Hotel and stuff like that but it cannot be boring. And thank God, the Harley Quinn show is the furthest thing from boring. It's incredibly violent, so much so that I can't show you a lot of the scenes here on YouTube where I'll get those nice demonetized yellow dollars. And it's seriously not a cartoon for kids. The va vast majority of the issues that we're talking about in the show are gonna be really complex. Anything from toxic relationships to gender norms to police brutality and, and a lot of other things that kids probably don't need to see along with mild nudity, blood, violence, gore, melting people, and more F words than any child would uh, need to hear. So if you're, if you're thinking about showing this to your kids, probably don't be fine for teenagers. It's a fast paced show, which I love. The episodes are only 20 minutes long, which is like standard for American TV, but a lot happens in those 20 minutes. It's not a slow drag procedural plot point. They just go, 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 and it'll just go completely off the rails in five minutes. I think the show is genuinely funny in an offensive kind of way. More on this one later. It's subversive to hero tropes, and I think it's extremely meta in a lot of clever sort of narrative Rick and Morty-like ways. I also think that it does the strong female characters properly, whereas most shows fail, and it also does them in a sort of meta way with a twist like M. Night Shyamalan. The cast is great. You've got big names in the cast like Alan Tudyk from Firefly, Jason Alexander from Seinfeld, Giancarlo Esposito from uh, Gus Fring from Breaking Bad, even Wanda Sykes. And on top of that casting, the main supporting cast is amazing. They rewrote most of them. King Shark is no longer just a dumb murder beast. He's a kind, sweethearted shark man who's tech savvy and doesn't really like to hurt people. He's like the strongest member of the team, but tries to avoid violence and just uses computer skills. You've got Clayface, who never uses any of his myriad of impressive powers and instead is obsessed with being an actor and improv comedian and just tries to disguise himself as random people. And he's kind of like funny in an annoying way. And you've got Poison Ivy, who's playing the straight guy and the funny guy straight guy dynamic because she has matured past being a supervillain. She no longer tries to rob banks or do bad things in Gotham, but considers herself more of an eco-terrorist now. She likes to melt investment bankers that are unethically trading carbon credits. She likes to murder CEOs that, you know, like, write off the loss of their giant oil spills or, you know, companies that pollute and do bad things. Sort of like an anti-corporate villain, which is interesting and fun, something I can kind of agree with, honestly. You've got Dr. Psycho, who is a racist, sex sexist and homophobic little manlet and a punching bag. Kind of fun. Kite Man. Honestly, just hilarious. The only kite-based supervillain I've ever seen in my life. Painfully stupid, oddly positive, and similar to that is Bane, who's been rewritten from a villain into kind of a big, strong, but awkward guy that people struggle to understand, even though he's really, like, well-meaning and nice to people. He just gets kind of clowned on by the uh, Legion of Doom. I wanted to take a minute to talk about the character of Harley Quinn herself in this show, because that's very important. Harley has been a very annoying character for me in pretty much all of the things that she's been in. I didn't like her in the comics, except for White Knight. She was pretty amazing. Didn't didn't like her in the old animated series, didn't like her in Suicide Squad. I will say Birds of Prey was a big step up over Suicide Squad. I was pretty happy with that one. Uh, but in general, Harley Quinn is loud. She's got this New York, Boston kind of accent that's just like nails on a chalkboard for me. It drives me crazy. And she's intentionally stupid despite having a PhD and depressingly codependent on the Joker in ways that for a guy who came from uh, a family with a lot of abusive and broken relationships uh, is, is not comfortable. I'm also not sexually into the Manic Pixie Dream Girl thing, so Harley Quinn is not hot enough to keep me interested in the show. However, in the Harley Quinn show, they decided to junk pretty much all of that and make Harley actually a good character. One of the most important things for me is they scaled back on some of the more annoying voice attributes. Her voice is still loud, clowny, and annoying, no doubt, but it's, it's scaled back down to reasonable, like, tolerable limits that I think most people will be okay with. 
Harley Quinn has actual motivations other than just making the Joker happy, which is really big. And they actually let her be smart and use her PhD for things that she went to school with and plan things, which is much better than just watching her follow the Joker around. And I feel like when I'm watching Harley in the Harley Quinn show, I'm watching a real person struggle and grow instead of just a deliberate train wreck to make the Joker happy. There are even episodes where they kind of like retcon Harley Quinn's past and show that she was absolutely cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs a long time before she met the Joker. There's like an episode where she passes out and they go into her head to view her memories to like view her childhood and view all this stuff. And it's like this oddly like meta narrative joke about how they're retconning a character because they do that in comic books while two of the other characters sit on the couch and smoke pot and talk to the audience about retconning characters. It's, it, it sounds actually a little ham-fisted, but it kind of works. I think it's a very clever way to update a character and make her, if we're doing this like strong female empowerment thing, to make her not codependent on a horrible person and they just play it all off for jokes. The whole show takes place in a world where all the other Batman stories and DC stories that you've ever read are all real. Like, they've all already happened. Darkseid is here. Queen of Fables is here. The Justice League. The Batman. Like, it's all pretty far into the future, and it's so much so that the citizens of Gotham have kind of gotten used to this. Like, if you live in Gotham, you're just used to seeing Batman and Robin and the Joker and Mr. Freeze and Penguin and all these people, and you know all their stories, and they're kind of like little mini celebrities, and they just destroy stuff, but the people in the city are like grumpy New Yorkers, and they kind of deal with it. And it oddly makes sense given the context and longevity of the Batman world. The basic plot in this world is that Harley and Joker finally break up. She wants to be done with this toxic relationship and she wants to spite him. So she wants to become a solo supervillain, commit bigger crimes than him, defeat more heroes than him, and become a worse version of herself to be a better version of the Joker. And basically she wants to do what the Joker does but prove that she's better than him. And oddly this is a weird kind of meta criticism because in the first season, this is obviously a female centric show right there's a lot of girl jokes in this um they do a lot of very embarrassingly ham-fisted female empowerment stuff while harley's on her quest to be the world's strongest or maybe only female supervillain. there's a glass ceiling for villains and she's just trying to do this villain stuff over and over and over again like other people have but the joke of it is kind of that she's trying to be the joker which is a man instead of being better than him and doing her completely own unique thing and the reason all of the female empowerment jokes are meta and cringy is because that she's too dumb to get that what she's doing is like inappropriate or wrong or not helpful. So I, I actually think it kind of worked. The best way to describe it would be that what will initially look like a heavy handed Captain Marvel style fail train is actually a parody of exactly that kind of fail train, but the characters that are in it don't know they're in a parody yet. Given all that, the show is also written kind of like a hyper violent sitcom. Sometimes it's kind of hard to sort through all the different levels of parody and self parody because they're parodying other media and sitcoms shows, animations. They make fun of a lot of other DC stuff, like they make fun of Zack Snyder and the CW productions and all of the things that you as DC fans would probably be familiar with those. And I personally think it's really funny. It's kind of a uh kind of shows DC has still has a sense of humor. And I think it rides the line of parody nicely between doing and saying offensive things and being criticized them, mostly with Dr. Psycho. And this is kind of the political part of this because we blabbed about female empowerment. There's like an LGBT part of the show or whatever, which a lot of people don't like for political reasons. Uh, but I think they wrote it really well, where Dr. Psycho is basically sort of like everybody's angry drunk uncle that's going to say and do horrible and offensive things, but he doesn't know any better. And some of the other characters don't know any better, but some do. So they like give him shit about it. And there's kind of a kind of a dynamic going on, like a good parody, like South Park, where you can say and do all of the ridiculously offensive things for all of the different types of people in the world, yet it's still handled in a way where it's not particularly like damning to that group and not without saying that they're bad. I don't know, it just goes over well. So let's move on to the last topic today in this really weird review. We're gonna be going a little bit more off the rails here because the show does one other thing that I've never seen any other show do except for Kill a Kill, which is to become a better version of what it's making fun of. And I'm gonna compare this to the Kill a Kill anime, which if you haven't seen it is a parody of those really trashy animes, the bad ones, where you have like girls in skimpy clothes that are elite warriors and sword fight and kill each other, but is really primarily a fan service and an excuse to put women in increasingly skimpy outfits. Well, Kill a Kill starts out parodying that genre and making fun of it and saying that it's stupid and that it's bad and that you shouldn't watch it. And then about the halfway point, 
it decides, you know what, I'm going to do a better version of this genre while still being a parody of this genre. And then all of a sudden, Kill a Kill comes out of nowhere with this banger of a story that's really fun to follow and characters that you want to see grow and do things, even if it's still a parody and just goes off on its own very kind of dramatic arc. The Harley Quinn show basically does the same thing. At a certain point, uh, probably between the first and second seasons, depending on where you want to measure it, the Harley Quinn show decides that it wants to be a better version of the types of shows that it's making fun of, like Captain Marvel type stuff, and then it actually does a good job of that having its own story, which I found to be very fun. That's all for this little review. I'm kind of gushing about the show. I had a lot of fun watching it. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I'd recommend you check it out. Just, it's hardly perfect. I could probably do another video criticizing a dozen different things, but I try to try to see the good in things and try to enjoy what I can about them. If you want to watch it, it's on uh, HBO Max, and I think it's also still on the DC Universe app-like thing that they have, so it's pretty easy to find. And uh, let me know what you think. Drifter out.